Oh, wow. That broke really easy. I'm Tommy Caldwell. In episode four, we talked about the shear resistance, so a horizontal edge of the rope. This is episode five where we're going to really talk about um, the cut resistance, so when your rope actually slides across the edge, um, which is a very different scenario. Yeah, and I'm still Phil from the Elevate Knowledge Base. Again, a guest episode with Tommy Caldwell. Yeah, so again, welcome Tommy to the Data Root Knowledge Base. The last episode um, we did was a specific testing setup where we tested dynamic falls on an edge and the edge was horizontal to really like trying to isolate the shear resistance of ropes. And if you haven't watched this, it's probably better to watch this first before you watch this episode here, just that it will be make more sense to you then. And then, I mean, we wanted to move to an angled edge and uh, I think the process was pretty interesting um, to also do it again all, all over for, for us because uh, what did we do in the, in the, in the beginning? We, we tried with the same testing setup as before, right? We tried with a similar testing setup but with the edge angled so that the yeah. rope would slide horizontally across it. And we found that the rope, if the parameters are exactly right, cuts quite easily. But it was really hard to control that at first. I mean, in the beginning, we yeah. found like every rope cut. It was brutal on the rope, but remember that one scenario where we took our most cut-proof rope and we tried it and it cut, and then we took a rope that we believed to be less cut-proof and it didn't break. And, and, we were, and so we had to figure out why that was, and what we realized is the rope that was let less cut-proof is more stretchy and we blade in a slightly more dynamic way. So instead of the rope um, abrading over the edge evenly, it would stretch. So it kind of like spread the abrasion out. And so there, yeah, there was interesting um, scenarios where um, it was really, it was really pretty hard to dial in exactly what was making the rope. Yeah, out. I mean, th this this piece here is like the perfect example. Like if you if you have a look, the abrasion like sign goes around the rope over like I don't know, like almost like half a meter, and this happens basically when the angle is like this that the rope running over it and the stretch of the rope is is bigger than actually the, the what the rope can move on the edge the spot where it actually cuts moves also and so you have a, a, a new piece of rope every centimeter that it slides down the rope which is of course good but the problem is you can't compare it then yeah, because in a real world scenario, the angle might be different and the, you know, I think that what we figured out is the dangerous thing is when the amount of, of stretch in the rope matches the angle so that the abrasion hits the same spot of the rope the whole time. So we had to really replicate that. We had to mark the rope. We had to change the angle. We had to try and like figure out a scenario so we could make that cut point on the rope be really consistent to understand which ropes were performing better. Yeah. Let me quickly tune in here. And let me repeat this. In order to find a test setup that really isolates the cutting load on a rope, we took out as much rope as possible of, out of the system. Remember, our goal was to make these already not quantifiable tests at least as comparable as possible. And so we ended up with the testing setup here. The rope is tied off very close to the edge. We got 1.2 meters from the knot to the redirect. 40 centimeter rope length from there then to the edge and another meter until where the weight was attached. Yeah, I mean one thing that was a little bit scary about the scenario is when everything matched up perfectly and the rope was getting cut in exactly the same spot, it didn't take a lot of force. Like I think we had like a 50 kilogram bag that was pretty easily cutting every rope. Yeah, I, I think it showed very uh, significantly how the cutting mechanisms compared to the shearing mechanisms are so much more dramatic. Yes, so this time it took us much longer to figure out the right testing setup. So in this time we also decided therefore to only go with two test specimens. That is the 8.8 mm rope as well as the 8.9 mm rope optimized for the cut value. And the basic idea here was again the same as in our last episode. We find a test setup that the supposedly weaker rope just does not pass and then compare if the stronger rope in that regard passes this same test setup. This process once again highlighted just how dangerously sharp edges can be and the more isolated the cutting forces are, the more dangerous they become. 
We finally found the right settings with a drop weight of only 50 kilograms and a drop height of only 50 centimeters. 50 centimeter fall, 50 kilogram weight, less cut resistant rope. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one. And it broke. We're right on the edge. So you can nicely see in this view that the testing setup forces the rope to stay on the edge at the same spot while it travels along the edge, really isolating the cutting load on the rope. Now, that is not much. And now, simply for the 8.9 millimeter rope. Yep, one, two, three. Okay, good, good. Ooh, gee, barely. <laughs> We then backed these test results up with a couple of more similar tests and then we wanted to know how far apart both rope samples were in regard to the falling height. So from the 0.5 meters, we now upped the falling height gradually for the 8.9 millimeter rope to find that at 0.75 meters falling height, in this setup, the limit was probably reached with a few tests where the rope held and a few others where it failed. And also then another test for the 8.8 millimeter rope revealed that 0.75 meter was far too much. We didn't actually cut test this rope in comparison, but. That's true, but I probably. It would have cut for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know, <laughs> that would have been bad. But I mean, the, I mean, the bottom line is you will still keep on climbing, right? Yeah, I'm still gonna, so. keep, I'm still gonna keep on climbing. <laughs> so. I'm gonna make an effort to train myself and my partners to belay more dynamically. I think that's a big takeaway. And, um, and then, yeah, I think I'm gonna be really cautious with edges. Yeah. yeah. Tommy summed that up pretty well. And I can only repeat the conclusions of the last video, independent of whether we are talking about recreational or professional endeavors. Fancy products are not everything. There are many ways to increase safety in regard to sharp edges. Avoid them wherever possible. Rationally choose specific optimized equipment according to your risk assessment is surely another one. Wherever possible, try and decrease the overall loads your rope system is exposed to. Think of shock absorbers or doubled rope systems. Really check out the earlier video about this. Learn and more than anything, practice to belay dynamically and make creative use of other equipment like belay assistance for that purpose. Combining as many of these actions as possible is the way to go here. So stay safe up there. <laughs>